Yes. Yeah. It's that time. This is a much more sophisticated group this time. Is it? That's my wine that he just bummed. He literally. <laughs> he literally This is actually I mean, a good movie. It's a top tier movie. I mean, no, fuck no, off. Fuck, fuck off. Tap is awesome, okay? They sucked his brains out. Fuck you. Doesn't have a lot more bug killing in it, though. You know what? This movie's fucking fantastic. It's got everything. I we watched Starship Troopers for the drunk review this time around. This is directed by Paul Verhoeven, who is a master of satire and shitty showgirls movies. Technically, the movie is exactly the same, but the perception of this film has aged like a fine wine. Yeah, this movie went from being like a kind of like a oh cool kill the bugs kind of movie to like holy shit that's a complete like uh, kind of commentary about society future society militaristic society we we talked about this Jeremy made a comment about this movie having aged like a fine wine and I stand by this movie hasn't this movie hasn't aged this movie is as good as it was then it's that the audience around it realized what it was this movie was always been a satirical masterpiece critiquing the militarism, fascism, fascism, the over-politicized nature of the media. Like this movie just tears all that shit to shreds in the like best way, in a way that's funny, relatable, and I mean just fucking epic throughout this entire goddamn movie. I'm doing my part too. <laughs> and it's got Casper Van Dien's jawline. Which yes is, it does. And oh, Dizzy's God. tits. Dizzy's Dizzy Dead, God, Dino Mayer. The film is just so good in every single aspect. Seven out of seven, review done. <laughs> yeah, almost. But we will explain a little bit further. <laughs> For instance, probably one of the best bits about this movie is that this film was released in 1997. I could say that it would feel, looks like it was released in like the late oh, 2000s. I, I aged effect. so well. CGI is great. The Planet P scene where all the bugs come out, it reminds me of Helm's Deep. Yeah. With all the orcs, and that's five years later. With a lot and a, of money. A lot of money, lot of money behind well, let's put, it. Let's put it in perspective some movies that came out in 97. It, Titanic, Titanic came out the same, came out the same year, year, but like, like other films that I, came out in 97. Yeah, I, Matrix they, came out a defining moment in CG yeah. history. Came out two years after this movie. I would argue this movie looks better. Oh. I think it's the CG has Some stuff aged has better. Aged yeah. Incredibly well. I and mean, and this does, entire movie looks better than the Burley Man. I mean, it does you help. You have seen the Starship Troopers armor progress through other shows. Yes, it has been used in like. Yeah, we got the reference Firefly. Rangers. It's in Firefly the Train Job. This yep. film had a budget of $100 million, and it did help with the fact that no one in this movie was a big name. So they were <laughs> able to put everything into the What do you want to do? bro? Neil Patrick Harris is huge. <laughs> And Pierre Hauser probably would have been the most expensive pair. He's of also in it for like 12 minutes. Exactly. <laughs> so they're able to use it on the production design and specifically the models and the CG, which some of it is just absolutely incredible. You go and look at some of the shadows and the textures. They've aged so well like, that quality. some of the yeah like exactly. I wouldn't have been I wouldn't have expected if it hadn't been done by ILM. It has it, that feel of like top tier fucking stuff. I don't know who did the special effects in the second. Yeah. I don't actually know. Who did the I don't know movies. actually know who did it either. But it just is done so well that you can watch this movie now and be like, wow. That looks really good. Are arguably more relevant now with the way like exactly. the political society is. Talking about the idea of a militaristic government society, but also when you talk about fascism. fascism. <laughs> they also talk about like uh, media and how they just like this two politicized, opinionated heads yelling at each other. Very much so of what is current. I find the idea of a bug that thinks offensive. And that was at the time because Paul Verhoeven. Uh, Paul Verhoeven. Verhoeven 
he did he not grow up during Yeah, the, he would have been that age. Like yeah, he's, so he's he an older saw guy. This so. shit. Gestapo propaganda. Yeah. yeah. So and that was his whole would point. Would you like to know more? Exactly. So that was the whole point of when he was making this movie, he was talking about that. Which what would, would, would have happened like during that more. time. Doogie Hauser goes from being oh, He looks like a baby. He looks like a little kid in the beginning of the movie. By the end they've shaded him out. They've made him look gaunt and like hollowed out, and he looks like a like full blown SS officer. And then he also at that time too is when when uh, Rico becomes the sergeant, and then they show these kids at the end of the film mm -hmm. that look like Hitler youth. The yeah, the, the Rico's roughnecks. Oh, is so roughnecks. Just we got a drink. So oh, drink. Yeah, another drink. By the way, we have actually drank, and this is the first time I've been. Ah, not fuck! Sober. I'm not. I'm not the only one drunk. Like Jeff and I are the only ones drunk with a drunk review. Jeremy actually got drunk with us this time. So fuck it, yeah. This movie's He's a good, good boy. <laughs> and he didn't hit his head on an end table. So no, we're, we're fucking no brain solid. concussion. <laughs> Fucking <laughs> <laughs> Paul Verhoeven's always been really critical of shit. I stand by like Robocop and the critique. Like, I mean, honestly, you could release Robocop now in the age of ACAB and shit like that, and it's just as relevant now. I think Starship Troopers exists in the same boat. It speaks to all the satirical political shit, all the commentary, but it's also just a fucking blast. That's a the only good bug is a dead bug. Thing that's what like, it it's combines. So much it's a combination fun. of those two things, which now like current cinema tries to focus a lot on the commentary side i watched this movie when i was well like nine years old on tv just keep re-watching this as i age and i just see more elements to it and that's why i make the comment about a fine wine is that it literally gets better every time we re-watch it that's you getting better that's you getting better not the movie the movie's yeah, exactly. fucking, the movie's fucking perfect that, Jeremy? and that i'm gonna say this was a great movie for a 12 year old boy to see boobs. Yeah, sure, why not? Yes, exactly. Shower scene across the board. Which, for those who do not know that story about that, the actors did feel uncomfortable doing that scene. So Paul Verhoeven and the director of photography are like, well, if everyone feels uncomfortable doing this scene, then I will also be naked with you. That doesn't so make let's, you less bad. Let's, all right, everyone, let's that shoot off. Does. Let's get, not let's. Not necessarily. <laughs> But let's uh, let's do the scene, all right? No, but no one look at the, the thing. What is? Ignore the bona. That's a great scene because I think that it's great. I think that scene defines what the world like. The world doesn't give a fuck anymore. Yeah. And in all honesty, you look at 1997. We were still pretty prudish. Like, oh yeah, the yeah. sexual the sexual awareness and awakening that happened in the we like, had, mid 2000s. Yeah, we hadn't, hadn't come to yet. the crudeness of the 2000s. Yeah. You know? It also reminds me of just the idea of like the director putting himself in with the actors. If I'm gonna make a supernatural reference, because I have to for this channel. The thing that I always okay. like about Kim Manners is during that episode with Bugs, R. when R. both Jensen and Jared were very uncomfortable with all those bees, he's like, all right guys. And so he came into that room wearing a t-shirt and shorts and he sat on a box in the room with all the fucking bees. And he's like, all right guys, let's do it. I mean, for the record, yeah. I was in the bees episode of X-Files and they didn't give me shit but the jeans and the t-shirt. So. Jesus Christ. That idea of the act, like the director just getting into the scene with the actors and just being a part of it, kind of like humanizing the whole thing. I hope Lars von Trier didn't do that for Nymphomaniac. Yeah, let's not, okay, <laughs> let's, let's, let's not, that, 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 that took a deep end. No. Sure, you could say maybe the acting's a little bit cheesy, because Casper Van Dien is not exactly the greatest. He's, he's, he's got some great moments, man, I stand by yes. I see the ace of spades. But he also has some bad ones, but that, that's the idea, it's so though. disarming. Exactly. The whole point is that these guys aren't big actors. I do have and to that, bring up that they do have... You know, my son. Fucking Mr. Krabs! Yeah. The enemy cannot push a button if you disable his hand. <laughs> Michael Ironside and I can't remember his name, Mr. Krabs. Clancy uh, Yates? Clancy, Clancy. No, Clancy Brown. Clancy there Brown. we go. These two guys are the best actors in this whole movie, to be honest. And NPH. Yeah, sure, why not? We what all we, love NPH. We all love NPH, but who do we quote more? Everyone fights, no one quits. If you don't do your job, I'll shoot you. Quote oh, Ray Jack. Yeah. Which, by Rad the way, Jack. Rad, Rad Jack. Jack, Jesus. Uh, it's so hard because I just know Ray Zach. Like, it's Jack. very confusing of where that came from. Was it coming from the TV show? I think it's from Which, Rockets. by the way, I still own, and I just recently rewatched it. And while the CG is oof, it's through a through bits a bit, it still is actually Fuck not that, man. I still watch Beast Machines, so the we're sequels? good. <laughs> 
were weird. Technically speaking, in the concept of what a drunk review is, we, <laughs> we should not be reviewing this movie. We should be reviewing, should be reviewing the, the second or the third film, because both of them are fucking garbage. I like the third one. They sucked his brains out. I mean, the second was truly really fucking terrible. The third the one is, in fact, the one that really started me talking about movies. Because if all of y'all want to go back to me going on this random ass rant, talking about how bad, like, all those really awful parody movies, I compared Starship Troopers 3 to Disaster Movie, Epic, epic movie, day movie, movie, yeah. Day Movie. That's when I thought that movie was shit. This movie, not at fucking all. Timeless. So, all right, gents. In your uh, reviews of my rant, and lady. Yeah, Jesus yes, fuck, dude. What are you being discriminatory? <laughs> Sarah, excuse me. Yeah, Sarah, we have brand new people in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so, as far okay, so we, re the score? we rate this out of seven. Jeremy's so starting from Mark. I thought you said you watched all the reviews. I thought she was a fan. Some. I saw some. I knew it had. It Have you subscribed yet? Okay, Mark. All right, Mark. What is your rating? Because I already know what. Mark hey, is. no, no. I'm gonna. I'm, mine's gonna take a bit because I'm gonna say it's a six. And this movie would be a seven. I fucking love this movie. But I bitched about it when we were watching it. There's a storyline that gets brought up in this movie that never gets talked about again. It's on Planet P. That great general who's like losing his fucking mind. Oh, he goes, God, God, we're gonna die. We're gonna die. <laughs> we're all gonna die. But they talk about him getting into his mind. They made him do things. They got into his mind. They make you do things. Do the bugs have a way to like possess people or like control them in some way? They want to know us so they can kill them. And they kind of hint at it a whole bunch and it never fucking happens until the sequel, which I think is even more of an indictment on this movie for not doing it because this fucking second movie sucks so bad. <laughs> Except if you want to watch titties in that one. Is there a lot of titties in that one? More than this one? There's a lot of titties. <laughs> PG, PG. What about it? This is fucking PG. <laughs> yeah, it's a six. It's a six out of seven. I fucking love this movie. It's great. It's spectacular. It does almost everything it does in the best way possible. Paul Verhoeven. I'm a huge fan of his. The movies he makes, the way he does things, the critiques he creates. It's awesome. And I love that a lot of people didn't get how fucking satirical this movie was for years. I saw this movie in theaters at 12. He had kind of explained it to me. I'd already read the book. It did it right. I know that there's like a, like a whole thing of Robert A. Heinlein apparently not liking this book or his family, his estate or whatever, didn't like it. Well, the, he was a grumpy old, kind of slightly prejudiced, racist, bigoted man. So. Yeah, he's from the 50s, it yeah. happens. <laughs> I just disagree with hating this movie for that stuff because I think it, it did criticize the militaristic compound. It did criticize fascist politics. And again, it's more relevant now than ever before. And uh, this movie's fucking solid. It just didn't give me my fucking brain bug properly. So it gets a fucking six. <laughs> All right, Jeff. Uh, six out of seven. Uh, it's oh. probably in my top 30 all-time favorite films. Um, timeless, and it inspired, as we said, Halo stuff. Yeah, yeah, we didn't talk about all the inspiration shit this it, it inspired multiple sci-fi stuff afterwards um, and flooded props into a lot of Vancouver <laughs> films too. Um, Hell cool, all over films. All over everywhere. film, but Vancouver we saw some of it, but yeah, like there's a lot of props left over from it. And yeah, like the sequels, the Generator franchise, it's a great film. It's not the best film out there, but for its time, it's timeless and it's great. Uh, so I'm a bit of a weird gauger on this because I saw the last 10 minutes now. She came super late. <laughs> I saw the whole thing 10 years ago. I'm going to be very bold. I think it's a perfect movie for what it is. Seven out of seven. She got here after the whole brain yes. thing. Okay, but you know what? What I'm going to say, film is a product of its time. And I think it did what it needed to do perfectly. And it has stayed with us. And of course, you can critique little bits and pieces. It is full zeitgeist. We all quote it. I literally got a job because I quoted the guy interviewing was like, well, maybe we'll bring you on for a bit. And I'm like, I'll take it. Until I get killed or you find someone better. <laughs> he was like, did you just quote Starship Troopers? I was like, yes. He was like, he got the job. Yeah. I liked the way that the female characters were portrayed. That no, she is right on that. Uh, but just like, honest, like, yes, there's sex. Like, yes, there's tits. Yes, there's ass. This is a yes, fucking badass. Like, the female characters kick ass. Mm -hmm. They don't even care to take names. They're just fucking doing their job. They're mm -hmm. having fun. They're living their lives. They're... There's Fighting definitely an, e an equality life. sexually in this movie. Well, this no, society is queer. That's nice. exactly why I actually, that's another layer about this movie it's, that I like. And I think heavy. that's the thing that I, when re watching this, I couldn't change a thing. And I'll actually will agree with her. 
I actually will so also drop give this a 7 out of 7. Oh, wow. Seven. Jeremy that's gets a drop of 7. That's because, his first 7. Well, for these ones, I mean, it's because of music. <laughs> every time I watch this movie, I enjoy I mean, it. I You're get right. a more layer out of it every time. Not only just in terms of just the political satire, but also it's a fun movie to watch. Mm -hmm. It's very quotable. I need a corporal. You're it until you're dead. Or do I find somebody better? You smash the entire area. You kill anything that has more than two legs. You get me? We get two sons! Brain bugs. Frankly, I find the idea of a bug that thinks offensive. We are literally quoting it there the entire time. Like, there's something that now has become more of like an aspect in terms of how film has now. But this one's just like, yeah, she fights Zim. She gets knocked out, of course. I was going to say, he Zim also beat, like, broke the arm and handled. <laughs> she My did arm's broken, she sir! Did better than the <laughs> he took an idea from a book that he admittedly hated. He read the first page and was like, fuck this shit. I mean, it is a boring book. Sometimes when you watch a film, over time, you can see like the cracks and whatnot in it. And sure, we saw a few, but truly really speaking, well. truly speaking, this film I really has not. Like Trump, Jeremy, and reviews. This film gets better every fucking time it I watch aged. it. It's That's also one of one of two movies in 1997 where a main character dies and says, "Don't let go." And then the character holding them immediately lets go right Speaking afterwards. Speaking of yes, yeah, so yeah, this movie has a seven for me. It's one of my personal favorite films. I enjoy it immensely every time I watch it. Aside from Jason Goes Manhattan, which is a superior film in the Friday the 13th. Oh, oh God, oh. shut the fuck up. <laughs> oh. They sucked his brains out. This is one of the few times that I have a rating over Mark because I am again, better at this. I would give this, honestly, they could cut that shit out, it would get a seven again. The end of the movie, Xander gets the fucking brain bug in the thing. I stand by the way they built the antagonist relationship between Xander and Rico. It would have been so much cooler if at the end of that movie the brain bug controlled Xander and Rico and Xander had to fight. What? Instead of him just dying like a bitch. No, but that's war! Although, I, his speech right before yeah, he dies he gets, is his he gets best a part. little bit of dignification. He's gonna kill you and your whole fucking race. It's great. And then so good luck. And then he spits all over. I won't yes. do that because. That is our review for Starship Troopers. The first time in our Ooh. drug reviews that we've actually watched a very, very good movie. Yeah. It probably will not happen again. Not true. <laughs> <laughs> but either way, guys, I hope you enjoyed this review. Um, like, like yeah. And subscribe. If you, if, like, what do you guys like think about Starship? Do you guys feel the same way we do? Have you feel that the film is aged as we think? Like, in terms of not just the how audiences perceive it. What do you guys think? Do you like this movie? Do you not? Tell us in the comments below. Aside from that, I'm gonna have something else that tastes weird. And until then. We'll see you guys next time. Hey, that shout really out to Patreon, really that Patreon subscriber Mark Wilmot. He's in here. He pays me. He <laughs> pays to be I in do, this I video. Do pay, I do technically pay to be in these videos. I just host. Yeah, take my money, motherfucker. Hi.